Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul, and it's my honor to be connecting with you on this Wednesday. It is the seventh day of June. We are deep into summer. In some areas of the world, <laughs> they're still having bouts of winter. So we're very blessed. I'm very blessed to be living here in Hawaii. And I'm very grateful for you joining me today. Today we'll be focusing on a very important topic that impacts a very, very large number of beings on this planet. It's called cancer. And this is an introduction to a workshop that I'll be offering on this weekend uh, on the spiritual roots and, most importantly, the spiritual answers. This is not about prayer. This is dramatically and substantially more relevant and important than something as topical as that. So uh, I speak from experience in that I have seen the results of what I'll be sharing about, that when people incorporate the wisdom learned through the, this workshop that I'll be offering this weekend, uh, they have and would have, could have, a substantially higher possibility of success. Because of what is the root cause, once somebody understands the root cause, which is not a chemical overdose or something inherited from the mother or father, although that does have some associations, all of these things that is listed have associations that bring about this physical condition. But there is a precursor well before any of the things that happen in this physical world that brought it to us. So in the traditional uh, methodologies, in the traditional way of looking at things, uh, there will be a label attached to this condition. You know, it was caused by this, or it was caused by that, or could be caused by this, could be caused by that. And for the most part, it's guesswork. The information that I'll be sharing uh, on my weekend workshop will be substantially more <coughs> specific as to the root. And the root uh, happened way before um, you came into this planet. And so that root, once discovered, reveals the answers. And the answers, once implemented, reveal the great possibility of hope and the great possibility of uh, whatever else you're in incorporating to have a far greater success. And so we're starting to see some people roll in here. So welcome to NNC. Welcome also to Susan Duvendorden. Haven't seen you in a while, Susan. Good to have you back. Having fun with the kids. Welcome also to Susan Birchmore and uh, Richard Mall. Good to see you here, Richard. Welcome, CJ. Welcome also to Nancy Chapman. Aloha. Welcome, Rishav. Welcome, Vanessa. Uh, also, welcome to Kristen Rojas. Thank you all for joining today. Uh, thank you for finding me on uh, my new Facebook page. We're going through some growing pains with that. Kristen is, uh, you know, she's pretty much awesome. Without her, I don't know if I'd have been able to reach any of you. And uh, she truly, it's like a 40 hour a week job handling some of the stuff that I do here online. And she does a phenomenal job. So make sure you give her big kudos. We love her. Um, so thank you all for joining. Today is, uh, uh, and it, the purpose of doing this is not only for those that join, because my guess is that most of, the, of those that join uh, do not have this condition, but are very aware of it. And the reason they're aware of it is because it tends to be happening all around us. Uh, we, we either have an aunt, an uncle, a mother, a father, or a best friend, or, or, or somebody in our uh, arm's reach that has this condition. And uh, for the most part, we become numb to it unless or until it impacts us. Uh, on the other side of that coin, those that are watching probably aren't so numb that they don't pay attention because they recognize that it's so prevalent today that it's a possibility it could come to us on an individual basis. And I leave that only as a possibility, but given the statistics, which I'll mention in a few of them in a little while, um, it could be very, very scary, definitely. The uh, the uh, what the statistics say are possible. And um, unfortunately, at least to the best of my knowledge, there has not been uh, anything out there that creates a 100% a fix. There are quite a few things out there that create a very high level of efficacy, uh, but none of those fall under the traditional um, approaches. 
uh, being traditional uh, Western medicine and traditional Eastern medicines. Uh, some of those could even have a, a high late, a rate of success, somewhere between 50 and 70 percent return, even in the, the traditional uh, methods. But for the most part, there's at least 30 percent left over that no one can can really <coughs> no one can really find the answer or solution for. And um, that's where the spiritual roots uh, kick in. And even when we look at, you know, some of the conditions that are out there where people, they'll go to a traditional methodology and they will have success. They will have success in that they will um, either do something natural or they'll do something uh, uh, that the doctor recommends or something the acupuncturist or the Eastern medicine doctor recommends. And they could definitely put it in remission. We've seen it uh, enough times to know that it's very possible. But what also t uh, has a history of happening, more so than not, is um, the return of that condition. <clears throat> and that's very uh, common, especially when it's uh, traditional medicine, your Western medicines and whatnot. <clears throat> Most people uh, have a reoccurrence. And uh, that also ties into the root causes of this condition. So what I'll be sharing with you today uh, again, part of it's for you, but part of it is for you to share with others. Because we want others to be made aware of um, this information. Uh, even if um, you don't know of anybody right now, my recommendation would be, sorry, the table's moving a lot because I'm moving a lot, so I'll try to calm it down here. <coughs> even be, even um, by keeping uh, the URL, like when this video finishes, uh, if you right click on it, there is a, a, a link where it can always be found. And I would recommend uh, keeping that in a place you'll find it. Bookmark it, email it to yourself. <laughs> That's my trick. I email things to myself and then when I get it, I, uh, I put it in an important folder so I always know where to find it. Um, one of these days I'll figure out a better method, but that's what I've figured out so far. So this, uh, this condition uh, has the possibility of impacting uh, 35 to 40 percent of us before we die. That's a substantial number. Over one-third, according to the current modern statistics, uh, could have this condition come upon them. Now, uh, I asked the question when I was doing some research on this, well, <clears throat> what's the history of this condition called cancer? I wanted to know what the history was. Is it more modern? Has it been around a while? I really wanted to have a deeper understanding. And so I'll give you some topical information that I discovered. Um, part of the history is that, uh, like breast cancer, was discovered approximately 1300 BC in, in the scientist finding some of the, uh, the mummified bodies and things of that nature. They have found it back then and they found the documentation on it as well. And they found that there was, at that time, uh, they were finding that there was, quote, no solutions. Now, that might have been only true for that region where this information was found. Uh, we know that <coughs> the American Indians, um, that the, the tribal uh, communities in the uh, rainforest, that they have uh, all kinds of solutions for these kinds of things. Um, so if we went into their history, we might not find I even the name cancer in their history. So there are a variety of very interesting uh, perspectives on this, very interesting pieces of information that, um, that can impact us positively depending on how we look at it. So it seems that we're having some difficulty gathering steam today. <clears throat> not as many people joining and or not as many people interested. But in either case, at some point in time, this video will save people's lives, and that's the intention in recording it. So again, also welcome to Elizabeth, welcome to Johnny, welcome Candy Cornette. <clears throat> Let us go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul. Thank you also for sharing, letting other people know about this. We place our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position, dropping the left hand in front of the heart center with the right hand gently pointed towards heaven. Closing our eyes. Let us connect. Dear Divine Tao and Source, all the beings of light serving the planet of the light side, dear beloved Mother Earth, beloved Father Heaven, 
our individual heavens teams, guides, angels, and saints. We love you. We honor you. We respect you. We deeply appreciate the opportunity to receive your guidance, wisdom, and blessings. We thank you for coming to be with us at this time, to sit in our heart center. We invite you to guide this information today so that it reaches the most people possible, that it serves the most people possible, aligns their heart and soul uh, in such a way that they recognize the essence of why they have any form of blockage in their life. Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony, we love you, honor you, appreciate you, respect you. We ask you to please be present at this time to offer your uh, blessings as we chant you. And we invite all souls in all universes to chant this Source Soul Song. So anybody new listening to this, uh, this is a blessing. Uh, make a request at this time. Let us join hearts and souls together. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace and harmony lu la lu la li lu la lu la la li lu la lu la li lu la lu la Okay, so we had a few more folks join us. Uh, welcome also to Kayla and welcome Rebecca. Uh, there's a few more that have joined us whose names I haven't seen pop up, so please forgive me if I haven't acknowledged you yet. <coughs> so welcome, my name is Master Paul and I'm a master teacher uh, trained through the Tao Academy 
which was developed by Dr. and Master Shah, uh, who is a world-renowned uh, healer. And he has served many souls worldwide. And a lot of what I share today as an introduction is designed to assist you with uh, discerning if this is something of value to you or a loved one, something that you may be comfortable sharing with a loved one. And to begin with, I want to talk a little bit about myself and my teacher so that you know of the credentials with which are going to be shared today and the information that will be shared today. And so um, I personally have been on the spiritual journey, uh, waking up literally around the age of 18, 19. Picked up a book off the shelf and it was called The Treatise on White Magic. And uh, I was like, ooh, magic, how interesting, you know. Started looking into it. It had nothing to do with magic. It had everything to do with the nature of the universe, the nature of uh, the human being and its associations with the universe. It was quite heady and quite deep. Um, so it was very difficult to wrap my mind around it. But I was able to get enough information where it made sense. And so that started my plight into set searching out all things astrological, all things theory, all things spiritual, all things soul. And um, <clears throat> about the age of 21, I entered a four-year theosophical school, which studied the, the, the variety of various religions, and also studied all things spiritual, including uh, the um, importation or the practicing of psychic abilities, um, seeing images that others focused on, things of that nature. Um, there was a study of the Theosophical Society and various other wisdom and teachings from various masters uh, from the early 20s, 30s, and 40s. And so that was a value and that it gave me a baseline in spirituality and understanding the variety of the belief systems out there and seeing the commonalities in all of them. I then uh, uh, took a sabbatical and um, moved to a place called Sedona, Arizona, which is a very spiritual area. And I tuned into some of the wisdom and teachings in that area. Aloha, Connie. Aloha, Kerry Kogan. Welcome. Thank you for joining. And I'm very grateful for this opportunity to serve you today. I hope you stick around. This should be of value to you. And so in Sedona, Arizona, uh, such a beautiful place, right? How could you not enjoy it? Um, there was a, a lot of masters actually that made that place home. One you might know of is Osho, uh, very, very wise being, very uh, good things to share. Another master a lot of people don't know about associated with the Korean community um, brought forth uh, something called Don Yoga. And Don Yoga is in some of the major cities, about 100 cities in the U.S. and 300 cities in Korea. Basically they taught something that wasn't really yoga, they taught energy body movement. And so I entered that program, learned about energy body movement, and for the first time in my life, right around the age of, I think it was about 33, 34, started feeling energy in the human body. And uh, uh, that was quite in exciting for me because to be able to feel it, to be able to, to know it, to be able to feel my crown chakra was, was quite exciting because it validated that which I couldn't see. <clears throat> I then... Um, uh, learned and became a master in that structure and went to Korea and trained over there for six months, uh, taught in facilities, and reached a point where I was no longer receiving value from that wisdom and teaching because I needed more understanding of the higher levels of spirituality and of the subject of uh, healing. Um, now, as a as the person, I want to put in a caveat that, that I am not a healer. Uh, I, I offer what's called Tao Blessings, uh, and you, I teach people how to self-heal. If, if anything with that label of healing occurs, then it wasn't from anything I did. It was something from the connection between me and Source. Um, and so there's an important difference there. Uh, but back to the story. So um, I then took, a, again, about a two-year sabbatical and started doing Qigong, which is a form of uh, Qi, which means energy, so it's a form of energy movement. It's very, very, very common in the East, especially in China. There are literally hospitals that don't do anything related to what we would call a hospital. They're Qigong hospitals, and all they do is energy movement. They do it eight hours a day, and they do different varying kinds of it. And the people that go there are exceedingly sick, you know, cancers, things of this nature. 
and a great deal of them have a high level of success and these maladies disappear sh simply from moving energy in the body. I'll be touching on that a little bit later today. So I trained with a Qigong master who I also consider to be an enlightened being based on what I witnessed uh, in my three years in her presence. <coughs> and I became her uh, number one business um, uh, associate helping her to run her business so I got to communicate with all of her students and clients and saw many many what would be called healing miracles and understood her structure of doing it so I speak from that uh, authority and wisdom as well and then uh, while I was under her tutelage um, I came across the wisdom and teachings of Dr. and Master Shah which is a, a good chunk of what I'll be sharing with you uh, today as an introductory to this uh, weekend uh, uh, seminar that I'll be offering. For those that are just stepped in, might not be able to stay, uh, Kristen, I'm sure, will post it. But I'll be offering a workshop this Saturday, which is recorded, so if you can't make it, if you just register, you will automatically receive the recording. So it's only a $20 workshop, but it'll be approximately three to four hours, and I'll be going into depth into some of the subject matter I'll be talking about on topical level today, uh, covering um, the spiritual roots and, more importantly, the spiritual answers. As an example, Qigong, we already know they have a high degree of efficacy in China just by using energy practice, the movement of the human body and the connection to Mother Earth and Heaven's energy. High, well, oh, well over 50% efficacy. That's not small when you're talking about a major malady. Uh, and so the, this kind of information is not well known in the West. And so when I bring up the subject, uh, which is the title of this workshop, understanding the spiritual roots and causes uh, and answers uh, the majority of this workshop will be employing the answers from the spiritual perspective uh, utilizing some of these wisdoms of chi chi energy and and the things that are not spoken about very much in the west so uh, i encourage you to enroll in that workshop uh, if nothing else maybe you can learn something and then and then you'll have the opportunity to share it with others which i'll talk more about so uh, I, I came across the wisdom and teachings of Master Shah. I was working with this master uh, from China, this female master, who I'd witnessed quite a few you know, uh, healing miracles under her tutelage. But my dilemma with her was, was there was no, um, no verbal education. It was all assimilated education uh, because her English was very, very limited. And so I, um, I had come across this teacher uh, Dr. and Master Shah, who I later come to understood was trained in China as a Western trained medical doctor. Uh, he also received a doctorate in Eastern medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, uh, very, very skilled at herbology, very skilled in all the acupuncture skills, became a world-class acupuncturist as well. Uh, he, through the course of his growth uh, in the medical side, uh, worked with some some very very high level high dollar high political uh, people um, serving the the top echelons uh, before he moved to Canada roughly 20 years ago uh, but from that was his medical side but uh, from birth uh, he had uh, he was born into this world as already being a very 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 special being at the age of four the um, uh, the Buddha Bodhisattva known as Kuan Yin, which is like the Mother Mary of the East, uh, came to him and started teaching him the 87 Buddha mantra, uh, which I had no clue was until I learned a little bit more. But um, uh, And so he's walking around the house at age four and five chanting this mantra, and his parents are like, what is that? And they brought him to some elders that understood it, and they said, oh, that's the Kuan Yin mantra. They're like, how does a four or five-year-old memorize 87 uh, lines that are not Mandarin Chinese. They're, they're literally not Mandarin Chinese. They're just 87 lines that represent 87 Buddhas. How does the four-year-old memorize that? Because from that early age, he had beings of light serving his soul journey. And that happened throughout the rest of his life, including uh, um, training with a Tai Chi master at the age of five. The, with his eyes, he's watching this master throwing people ac across the, the grass and they're, they're still five feet from him, and he's using chi energy to move them away from him. He becomes a Tai Chi uh, master. Then he becomes a Qi Gong master. He trained as a Shaolin monk. He um, 
received grandmaster level of Qigong in 2002. Out of roughly 10,000 people qualified to receive that, he was number one. Uh, so he was very well recognized for his Qi energy skills. And at that time was when everything changed. That was when he uh, was in San Francisco zone and he was uh, doing education and teaching people using Qi energy how to re reverse or how to uh, bring about the highest possibility of reversal for stage four cancer. He didn't play around. He went out and looked for people with major, major conditions because that's what his teacher, Master Guo, did. Master Guo was very well renowned in China as the man who cured the incurables because people from all over China that weren't getting results anywhere else would come to him and he would use herbs and he would use uh, certain energy structures and things you will learn about in the workshop to bring about resolve. Uh, and so he simply did what his teacher taught him. And so in doing this, uh, these practices became Qigong master. He then learned feng shui, which absolutely impacts our health, became a grandmaster in feng shui. He is now uh, a grandmaster in calligraphy. Uh, what he uses the term, he calls it uh, Tao calligraphy, which carries very, very high frequency and power. We'll again talk more about that in the workshop. But uh, many, 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 like thousands of people receiving tremendous results from utilizing the Tao calligraphy for uh, bringing about health and wellness, uh, maintaining the highest health and wellness in their, in their uh, physical health and uh, body. And so, trained with Master Shah starting about nine years ago. Um, and when I entered his information, uh, I was very um, unsure if this was a person that I should be paying attention to. Uh, so I read one of his books and that really resonated with me and I saw him doing uh, blessings on stage, you know, dial level blessings, in which people would have significant uh, measurable suffering and within 5, 10, 15 minutes uh, that measurable suffering would be, you know, reduced to the point of non-existence or very, very low. So it wasn't like, you know, one of the, uh, you know, um, Bible thumping people that says, you are healed, you know, and then all of a sudden they fall on the ground, they wake up fine. No, it wasn't like that. He would go through the process of serving them with Tao blessings and they might have a 40 or 50 percent result and he would do a little bit more and they would have another 20 or 30 percent, 15, 20 minutes and he would have very good results. And here's what he explained to help everybody in the audience understand what was going on. And this is the, the crux this is the most important part of why I chose to uh, learn from this teacher, why I chose to follow a very uh, uh, educated path. I paid over, uh, uh, well, at least over thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 for the education and the ability to serve you through uh, um, Tao blessings. And uh, it's also the reason why uh, he has millions and millions of people who pay attention when, when he's around. And the crux of what he taught us is he said, first of all, I, speaking about himself, am not doing the blessings. He always gives credit to the Creator, always gives credit to the Divine Tao Source, God, whatever name you want to call it. Never ever took credit. Tao is spelled T-A-O, and Tao is a word that uh, is Eastern, known in the East. Some people associate it with Taoism, which is a religion. That's not what Tao is. Don't confuse the two. Tao is a word that represents the beginning of all things, the, cre the creation of all things, from which all things are birthed. And so that's what that word represents. So um, what he explained was, first of all, I'm not doing it. And then he said, what I am uh, doing is I'm asking heaven to offer the blessings to release the suffering from this person that was caused by this person and uh, potentially caused by his ancestors. So I'm sitting in the audience, I'm scratching my head going, hmm, that's interesting. How does this person cause their own back pain? You know, they get out of bed and it's there and doesn't go away for weeks and then it comes back every three weeks. You know, you know people like that. Uh, or 
you know, they didn't cause the car accident, somebody rear-ended them, and now they've had back pain for 30 years. So how is it that they caused it? And he went on to explain that in, in the understanding that he's grown up with, from the early age where these beings of light had been teaching him, also from the culture he grew up in, that he was taught that um, if we, in this or previous times, or our ancestors, which is our mothers and fathers and their mothers and fathers and so forth, had brought harm or suffering to others, then that naturally would return upon uh, the, themselves. So if they hurt others, then naturally they would have some experience uh, as a boomerang effect, so to speak. And so he said in the East they call it karma. Uh, certain traditions they call it duh. And in the West, under the Christian, Catholic, Mormon, and Protestant religions and whatnot, they would refer to it as deeds, D-E-E-D-S where one does wrong deeds to others and they receive the uh, deeds upon themselves. Or they might say in the uh, Eastern, in the Western culture, they might say um, that um, the sins of the ancestors fall upon the children. And so there's different ways of looking at it. From his growing up, they call it karma. So you might hear that word a lot uh, in my communication, but don't take it as if I'm speaking religious, because I'm certainly not. Uh, the purpose of this is to um, help you understand what is the root. So when we take a look at neck pain, shoulder pain, back pain, cancer, uh, significant uh, health il illnesses, um, these all have a root. These are not accidental. I was talking to a lady this morning that literally every day has to crawl up her stairs to get to the second floor where her bedroom is. She acquired the house after the divorce, but you know she can't sell it because she's got all kinds of financial issues um, and she needs a place to stay. And so that's her modem operandi. Uh, uh, about 15 years ago, something happened. The doctors have a name for it, but they don't know how to cure it. And it's a condition. From the spiritual perspective, they would say, you don't need to know the label of what uh, has been given to it by the Eastern or Western medicine. You just need to know that at some point in you or your lineage, harm had been caused to others that brought about that condition. Now, that's hard for a lot of people to grasp or, or um, wrap their minds around with full, you know, okay, I, I totally buy in. And I get that because uh, we come from a world where we're inundated with the internet and information that says um, A causes B, B causes C. If you have cancer, well, we're not quite sure what caused it, but we know there's toxicity in the water, we know there's toxicity, there's chemicals, we know there's um, uh, toxicity in the air, we know that... Um, that things aren't as clean as they used to be. We know that very, very angry people tend to have liver problems and cancer. And, you know, we know that viruses can cause uh, major health issues and some are associated with cancers and so forth. And so A equals B, period. That's the typical perspective that is taught by the majority of the industry that's out there. And I agree 100%. I have zero disagreement with this information. It is the cause on the physical level. No question about it, okay? If I don't feel good, what's the cause? Probably a lack of sleep, eating something bad, A equals B. I have no issue with the information that's out there. What I've come to understand through all of these years of service, through having received Tao blessing abilities, which I received roughly nine years ago and have been offering Tao blessings for over nine years, having seen people's uh, a significant 10 on a 10 level pain and discomfort dissolved to zero multiple, multiple times. And all I did was turned on this transmission I received and offered it out blessing. I know that there's more to it than what caused it. A does not always equal B because B is the back pain. B is the cancer. B is the whatever. And in the case of a back pain for this example purposes, 
if the car accident caused the back pain and the gentleman or the lady goes to the chiropractor, they go to the massage, they go to the acupuncturist, they go to the electrical therapist, they go to uh, physical therapy, and uh, the best they got was a 20% decrease in the pain, and then they go and they get back surgery and they get another 10% decrease, but it's still there on a 5 out of 10 scale. And then I, because of the blessings I received through Master Shah, offer a Tao blessing and again, I take no credit for it. I didn't do it. I'm just a middleman. But the, the uh, suffering goes away when all these other modalities could have and should have caused it. Then A must not equal B. That's what I've come to understand as a much deeper truth. You don't have to agree with that. That's just what I've come to understand. So when we look at the root cause of whatever that suffering may be, we can start to have a far greater understanding that cancer has a root. Any of the major conditions have a deep root, and that deep root is often why when we throw in the traditional Eastern or Western approach at it, it works but works only temporarily, or works only half-heartedly, or works only some. Part of the reason, a major part of the reason why it's not fully having the long-term effect that one would hope is because of that spiritual root being karma. The original association was not cleared. So why is it that when Master Shah offers a Tao blessing, when I offer a Tao blessing, when we connect with the source and we ask for the blessing to occur where that person no longer has that suffering, why is it that it has the possibility of working? We never say it will work. We don't say that. We avoid that in its entirety because we're not responsible for doing it in the first place. Heaven is the one that's responsible for doing it. Having done this for nine years, having offered well over, uh, well over a thousand blessings, well over a thousand, Master Shah, well over a million blessings, um, and having seen results in 90 plus percent of them, measurable, no questions asked results. And all I did was turn on a treasure and offer a blessing. Measurable over 90 percent results. Don't touch the person, don't come near the person. Doesn't matter if they're 6,000, 10,000 miles away. Distance is irrelevant, time is irrelevant. I've done these blessings on videos and people have watched them two weeks later, months later, and had the same results. How is this possible from our conscious mind level? It can only be made possible when we understand that I, Master Shah, were not doing it. Heaven is responsible of releasing the suffering that we are having. If we have a cancer, if we have anything happening in our life that is a malady, I saw arthritis come up from one of the person, uh, anger, hate, negativity, outlooks, these are based in uh, uh, ha having caused those same form of conditions upon others. I know it's not the easiest thing to, to swallow. It actually sucks. It's just very unpleasant to imagine that we, the good people that we are, could have done anything that would have caused suffering of the nature we have upon another. That's just almost impossible for the mind to grasp. But here's what I tell everybody when they have the ears to hear it. The person that you are today, the personality that you are today, has learned a great deal of lessons between now and the time the personality that happening back then, whenever then was, or the ancestor that you don't know may have made some unpleasant choices. When those unpleasant choices were made, either by you or an ancestor, trust me when I say you didn't have the intelligence and the heart you have today. So when we wake up to the possibility, to the possibility that we or someone in our ancestral tree had brought harm and suffering to another and that that has revisited upon us, that is where the rubber hits the road that is where the real possibility of self-healing begins. Truly, truly 
important to recognize that. Why? Because when you recognize responsibility, you can start to put the wheels into motion of the removal of the spiritual debt. When I, as a master teacher, when a master Shah, when we offer a Tao blessing, why does it work? Because our request is, dear heaven, would you please release some, up to you heaven, of the spiritual debt that has brought about this suffering for this person. If that debt is released, the percentage of it is up to heaven, then that person could have a measurable result. I have witnessed this for nine years, measurable results. There's no explanation for it when you use the mind. The only possible explanation is when you recognize the truth of what I've just shared with you. Heaven is very real. God is very real. Heaven wants to assist us to wake up to the nature of how things work. When heaven makes an agreement to clear that spiritual debt and that person's suffering level goes from a nine down to a one, what heaven is trying to do for that person is saying, my son, my daughter, I love you. We will do this on your behalf. We will, we will clear this spiritual debt on your behalf. But we want you to wake up and recognize that suffering has been caused upon others. It's important that you wake up and do forgiveness. It's important that you wake up and not make the same mistakes again. It's important that you recognize the suffering that has come to you was there for a reason. So this has been the teachings that Master Shah was taught when he was trained through, very, uh, through these high-level beings that came to him through life. Now he, he takes, again, no credit. He is one of the universal servants that our Creator has planted on this earth to serve us in a very high, powerful, and important way. And as a universal servant, he is responsible for sharing the wisdom so that we don't make the same errors moving forward, so that we don't um, uh, uh, continue to harm ourselves and others. Original sin, I see Caring asking. Yes, this is exactly that. The, the, our Creator gives the same wisdom to our beloved Jesus. Our Creator gives the same wisdom to our beloved Buddha. One happens to be in the West, the other happens to be in the East. This same Creator brings the same wisdom to all sorts of, of beings of light that have come to humanity in the course of time. We only know it by the various teachings that we have. If you grew up in the West, you know it as sin. If you grew up in the East, you know it as karma. It's irrelevant, the name. The wisdom is a recognition that there is a divine and that the divine has brought powers and authorities to release the blockages to beloved beings on earth. And uh, as long as those beings that deliver those um, blessings maintain egolessness, maintain the intention to offer unconditional service, then those souls uh, can receive the blessings. Um, so this is the foundation through which this entire workshop will be built upon. I will touch on the nature of, of uh, what I understand about cancer. I will touch on the histories of it. I will touch on soul on a dramatically deeper level than what I'm touching on today. I will go into a lot of practices that you can do for self-healing. And these practices will apply for anything, it doesn't matter. Cancer is just a label. Um, the source of it is the spiritual debts, the deeds, the sins, the karma. Um, and so the spiritual uh, source is the same and the spiritual solutions and answers are the same. Clear the blockages, release the, uh, the way it's showing up as a blockage at the level of soul. Here's the one sentence secret that's important to grasp. Soul lives forever and it is the carrier of all of our sins, all of our karma, all of our debt. It is also the carrier of all of our love, all of our blessings, all of our good 
karma. People think of it always as a negative. That's, that's, that's the, the fault of the religious systems out there. They bring everything as a major negative, right? I don't teach you that, that um, you know, we have many, many good things in our records, but the soul carries this. And that blockage at the level of soul is the reason why what we do down here at the physical level doesn't always work. Because if you remove it through chemotherapy or radiation, or, 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 and they say, well, it's in remission, um, okay, could it come back? Very possibly. Depends on how heavy was that spiritual debt. The soul is the carrier of that. How do you clear the blockages? What is the answer? You have to deal with it at the level of origination. You have to deal with it at the level of forgiveness. And so I'll be teaching the depths of that and the very specifics of how to accomplish that in this workshop. I'll be offering uh, uh, blessings and I'll be offering the opportunity for very, very advanced blessings that could, could have the possibility of releasing very large amounts of spiritual debt that in essence give you a far greater probability of success. And visually speaking, I want to leave you with this visual. It doesn't matter what the label. It doesn't matter if it's a cancer, a, 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 a arthritis, a, a brain tumor. It doesn't matter if it's Lyme's disease. The label is irrelevant. We all know that there's a physical world source, but we've come to understand that the, what we throw at it doesn't always work. That must mean that A doesn't always equal B, because the soul is the precursor to everything. Heal the soul first, and healing of the mind and body will follow. That is the one sentence secret. So that's what you will receive in this workshop, is the wisdom, the teachings, and the understandings of how to accomplish that at a very high level. You can do it by self, you can uh, do it with assistance. That part's completely up to the person that's watching and how they want to receive. So now I will offer a blessing to offer an example. This blessing is not just for you that is watching now. This blessing is for all those that will be listening later on the podcast, all those that will be watching that you will share this with all those that will be watching that this video will, will blast across Facebook and they'll hopefully stick around long enough to receive the wisdom and the blessings. So where you're at, please choose something, especially if you're new. If you want to know if a pair is sweet, if you want to know if a Tao blessing works, then pick something that is measurable. You have neck pain, stomach discomfort, you have uh, something that you can put a number to. Cho you know, choose a number. Is it a 20? Is it an 18? Is it a 10? Is it a 9? Is it a, is it a, uh, uh, choose it on a 10 scale, make it easy. Uh, 10 is, you know, off the charts. Zero is it's gone. Okay? And then afterwards, report. What was your experience? Well, I had a neck pain and it was a 6 and now it's a 2, as an example. Okay? So, Make note of it. I will begin the blessing in just a moment. I will offer this blessing using uh, several of my treasures that I have turned on, and I will chant the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony as an additional service to each of you. This blessing will be for five minutes. Let me set my alarm. This is a very big blessing, guys. I tell you, you're very blessed. Okay. Blessing begin. 
This is Japanese. Kokoro to tamashiro hitotsuri shiyo Ahe wa soshite chowa Ahe wa soshite chowa And now Thai. Chanrak wa jai legit binyan Chanrak muan man nu chan Muan hua jai legit fin yarn kao du ai gong Rak san de su let sar ma ki Rak san de su let sar ma ki 
How, how, how? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Blessing complete. My Tao treasures, please return. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can share with you that you are all very, very blessed. So please share at this time. What was your uh, experience? Um, did you notice anything physically? Did you heat up? A lot of times we, we get very hot. Uh, did you feel any vibrations or sensations in the area that you requested? Did you um, notice any difference in the discomfort level if you're one of those newer folks that need to measure things, that, that need that trust level uh, uh, connected? So if you did, what was your level before and what is it now? Now, I've done this many, many times online, many, many times live. I've seen uh, very, very big results, so I have no question that there will be some positive comments here. Uh, maybe there will be no results for some of you, which means that the blockage is higher than what a five-minute blessing can offer. <coughs> and so, um, but regardless, uh, there will be some positive responses, I'm confident. And one of the reasons why it works, very simple. I turned on what's called healing transmissions. I uh, used chanting mantra, which is one of four powers, soul power, mind power, body power, sound power. And I employed the, the combination of those four powers in offering a blessing. Uh, it's amazing when you think about it that people would have this pain, now it's down to here, when you're well over 2,000 miles away for 99% of you since I'm operating in Hawaii and this is over a video. Some of you will be watching this after the fact, one week, two weeks, three weeks later, and you will receive benefits. Your mind has to go, how is this possible? The only way, the only answer, there is one that created us, and there is such a thing as a forgiveness. And so there will be very high-level teachings on that in this workshop. Saturday on the 10th, the, the links Kristen is posting, and it starts at 8 a.m. Hawaii time. It starts at uh, um, 11 a.m. Pacific time. It doesn't really matter what time it starts because you can always watch it whenever you're ready. If you register for it, you'll instantly receive the recording when it's done. So you can take care of other responsibilities if you need to. <coughs> okay, so I see some comments. Uh, let me back them up here and review some of these. Um, so NNC says, Wow, she had a bad cough and a sore throat. It's about to start. Uh, it was a 7 at the start, and now it's down to a 1. It's almost gone. Wow, that's huge. Sore throats are not easy to go away in 5 minutes. That's not a small thing. And the cough as well. Congratula congratulations, NNC. Thank you. Thank you, Heaven. Thank you, Divine. Um, Linda says she felt heat. Thank you. Um, Linda Simone says thank you. Janice Crosby's got very hot, ringing in one ear for a moment. And my ear is ringing a little bit too. I usually get blessings when I offer these. Susan Birchmore says, thank you, thank you, thank you. Becky says, thank you, thank you, thank you. Linda felt cool. Um, yes, this is a soul song, Love, Peace, and Harmony. It is uh, something you can download if you'd like. I think Kristen posted that very early on in the first 10 minutes. It's a beautiful song. It is a healing song, no question about it. Uh, and thank you, Kristen, for posting the links. Um, okay. So, Linda, your six is still a six? It didn't change at all? I don't even know what you requested, um, but I'd be curious. I'm okay uh, with, with no change. That does happen probably about 20 or 30 percent of the time, and that usually has to do with the condition is, is a little heavier, uh, possibly a lack of trust, uh, or, or just the need for longer blessing. Uh, You've got to give heaven time to do their job, so to speak. <laughs> okay. So... I truly am grateful for all of you uh, coming today, for your sharing, for um, your patience in this hour. It takes time to deliver this message. If you know of anybody, please consider sharing this with them. Now, um, you can do that. After this is done, uh, you can right-click on the video itself, and there's a URL that is created. And you can instantly share that on Messenger, uh, share it on somebody's page. Um, you can share it in an email. There's many different ways that you can share this. But, but do share it with someone that you, that you care about. I encourage you to not um, assume there would be no interest because of their belief system. You'd be very, very surprised how many people will open their mind when they're faced with death. And so don't make that decision for them. 
just offer it and say, you know, this may be of interest to you. I, 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 uh, I would encourage you to have an open mind. And you might be very surprised. Um, I take no credit for any of this. Heaven works uh, through many, many souls on earth. I'm one that's blessed that heaven works through. And uh, if you were here, there's a reason. If this lands in front of somebody, there's a reason. Heaven is trying to save people's lives. They're doing the best they can. We have to do our part by sharing it. So thank you for that. Um, also, if you're new and you enjoy this, you'd like to be made abreast of when my live streams are, please remember to like this Facebook page and also hit the subscribe button. I'm very, uh, uh, very, very grateful for this opportunity to serve you. And I will be back tomorrow, same time, same place. I might be out on the island somewhere, so you might get a little sunshine and ocean in the background if I can find a spot with good 4G. Hopefully my phone won't cut off on me. It's done that occasionally. But um, thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all the beings of light who came. Respectfully return. Bye-bye, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.